Okay, so a quick disclaimer before we get started. Uh, I am by no means an expert in any of the things that you're about to watch me do. Uh, I am just a hobbyist, uh, trying things out, experimenting and seeing what works. I do not recommend any of the techniques that you see me use in these videos, and if you do choose to copy them, do so at your own risk. So with that said, enjoy the video. Well, we're finally here, uh, part four, putting this thing back together. Um, I've been really looking forward to this. Everything has been gorgeously retrobrighted. It's all fixed, it's all looking great. I can't wait to just put it back together and see what it looks like. What I'm gonna do is set the camera up here so that you can watch me do it. I'll probably do it on a time-lapse, but uh, I'll slow it down and explain some of the more difficult bits uh, just for the sake of educational value, but there already are plenty of uh, disassembling and reassembling GameCube videos on YouTube, so this isn't gonna be another one of them, but again, I will explain some of the more difficult bits. So, let's do that. I was in I was in I I was in I 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 I I was in uh, part back together. The first thing you need to do, uh, once you've clipped the uh, once you've clipped the disc player on, is there's three screws that go underneath the fan housing. You need to put them in first, for obvious reasons. I think it's worth as well securing the other side with a couple of screws as well, uh, just so that it's more even. You don't ever want to over tighten screws um, in a GameCube either because most of the time they're screwing into plastic. Sometimes they're screwing into metal, but most of the time they are screwing into plastic so you don't want to over tighten them. Anyway, we're going to put these three screws in underneath the fan housing. There is another screw that needs to go in before you put the fan housing on and it's just to the right of the uh, AV output here. You need to make sure that you put that one in before putting the fan housing on because the power uh, input uh, will block that screw housing. So you need, to, uh, you need to do that one before you put the fan on. The next thing to do is to sit the fan housing into position. So the wire for the fan needs to go into the little uh, groove there on the fan housing itself. And then you just sit it, sit the wire in and sit the fan housing like so. Just, it just sits in nicely at the side. I can even let go of it. And it just, uh, it sits quite nicely there. And again, it's really important not to over tighten these. The, as soon as you feel resistance, stop. You don't need to screw any further than that. There's plenty of things holding this unit together and you really don't need to overdo it. Okay, and then there's these two uh, pieces of metal which, which sit on top of the memory card readers and they have long they have the long screws with the thread right at the bottom and there's two of them for each metal piece like that and they just sit into where the memory card goes like so right so putting the memory card uh, slot covers back in, which I recommend you do at this stage. It's easy, but it's a bit fiddly. I don't think you can really get it wrong putting the spring on. You just put it on and just make sure that uh, it sits in that groove there. 
and then turn it round, fold the spring over, tuck it underneath this plastic part here, push the memory card slot so it's going inwards, and then clip it into place. And it's really, it really is that easy. Right, so that's the base unit, pretty much completely put back together. Um, so the next bit is gonna be assembling the top case. And this part is a little bit trickier, so I am gonna show you how to do some of this. So let's do the easy stuff first, just get that out of the way. So to put the jewel back in, you just find the, the uh, lip on the side of the jewel, put that in there and it just clicks into place, done. The next thing I would do is put the buttons back in. You actually can't get the buttons wrong because each one has got a particular shape to it so it will only fit into that into the correct hole. So pretty savvy of Nintendo to come up with that. You just find where it fits and the buttons pretty much just click into place quite easily. Uh, next thing to do then, the next easy part is the uh, LED, which is this bit of clear plastic. Uh, it's the bit that the LED shines through uh, so that you can see that the unit is switched on and it just goes into the front there. Again, it's, it's, the, sh it's the shape of it, you can't really get it wrong. And it's just a couple of uh, ordinary screws to put that in. Uh, the next thing to do is, uh, I've taken this out, you, you don't necessarily have to take that, that out, but I did just for ease of cleaning. Uh, again, it's got little things that it clips onto, so you can't put it back on the wrong side. But it just clips in quite nicely. There we go. This is where it gets tricky. What you need to do now is put the lid uh, back in, and I'm just going to put down a microfiber cloth for it to sit into so that the... Uh, jewel doesn't get scratched whilst I'm doing this. Now, this piece of plastic here, you'll see it's, it's shaped like that and it's got a little nubbin at the back and you need to place that so that it catches where you see the lid. The nubbin needs to go into that, that hole on the side of the lid and it, it holds it into place. Okay, so like that. And you'll see, if as long as you know that that's where it goes, you'll see that uh, the bit that it needs to screw into, it's quite obvious. Uh, it sits quite nicely into position. And then you just need a normal screw just to screw that into place. So it goes on the side where the power button is and it holds the lid into place on one side. Now on the other side is a little bit tricky. You need to find this bit uh, it's like a little cog, okay, and that sits against the other cog, which is attached to the lid. So just, I don't know if you can see, just here, it kind of just sits into place uh, next to the other. I'm trying to get it in the light. You can see, you can see that that cog there on the on the lid. Uh, you need to sit the black one next to that. And it, I mean, it's quite obvious where it goes, but you do need to put that into place correctly. And then the piece you need now is this other piece that has a nubbin on it. Uh, that nubbin holds the lid in place on the other side and the uh, semicircular groove that goes over the cog that you've just put in. And you need this spring. It's got a short, a short bit there and then a long bit there. You slip the spring over uh, the nubbin so that the short edge catches onto the uh, catches onto the plastic, okay, like so. And then this bit sits into the actual lid itself. Now putting this in can be a bit of a nightmare. You just have to. The idea is to try and get the nubbin to sit into the lid um, but you've also got the spring to deal with while you're trying to do that and it, and it is quite difficult but you just have to keep going until it's done and then it'll just it'll all just sit nicely in 
and that is actually what um, that's actually what creates the opening mechanism for the lid. Okay, so next we need to find this bit and this large spring. Now this is really tricky to put back together. So I'll try and show you where it goes. It goes, the bumpy side of this goes towards the front and the cylinder that holds the spring goes onto the tall uh, bit of plastic next to this grill, next to the uh, fan grill. There's a tall bit of plastic just there and the cylinder fits with the cylinder pointing down and with the bumpy stuff, with the bumpy edge at the front of the unit, like so. And if you get it in, you'll see it moves back and forth and that's what actually provides the catch for the lid but it needs in order for it to work it needs its spring so the way that you put the spring on is you find the cylinder again you find a little hole and you post the spring through that little hole and, and then sit it onto the cylinder like that and once you've done that this part will just sit against against the plastic of the wall and you just have to just be really careful and maneuver it back into that position. I would recommend making sure that you're familiar with the position before trying to put this back in. Once you've got it back in, you'll see that now that the spring is there, it provides a nice solid catch. So we need to screw that into position using these two screws, the ones with the built-in washers. They're the ones that screw this thing into place. Okay, so once you've secured those in place, you can turn it over and you'll see that the lid now pops open as it should. So that's, that is that done. Next thing to do then is put the handle on and this goes into the two uh, outermost uh, posts in the, in the back of the lid. It goes that way around with these pointing upwards and it just you'll see it just quite easily sits in nicely and then it's two ordinary screws uh, near the very outer edge of the top case just to hold it in place right then so it's just a case of putting this back and then putting the four security screws back in and that's that done And there we have it. So then, here it is. The newly refurbished GameCube. As you can see, it's lovely and clean. Look at the fan, no dust at all. It's all been completely cleaned and serviced. The jewel is shining like new. All of this is lovely and gray and it's not all yellowed. Uh, and it's just in much better condition now. You can see where the dings are. That's where the plasticine is. It's um, another one on the back there. I think it's okay, you know. It's, uh, it just hides the fact that they're, that they're there. It's very difficult to notice. I mean, on camera, if I'm holding it up to the camera, you can really see it. And it's, uh, you know, it's it's all right. It's, it's, it's a bit of a makeshift way of getting around it. But when I'm looking at that from a distance, I really can't tell that it's there at all. It's, it's It just looks great. So I'm happy with that. I think that's a, a really good job of uh, refurbishing this GameCube. Uh, I'm not sure if you can remember what it looked like before, but here is a quick clip just to remind you. Pretty dreadful condition. Uh, the front panel is shows the most obvious signs of discolouring, but this is what it looks like now. So I am super happy with that. So thanks for joining me for these videos. I hope you've enjoyed them. I hope you've found them useful, uh, informative in some way. 
Uh, don't try it at home unless you're confident with what you're doing. And uh, yeah, thanks for joining me. See you again next time.